The current narrative of the French presidential election is a pretty simple one. National Front leader Marine Le Pen will potentially win the first round or narrowly be defeated by Emmanuel Macron. Come the second round, when the two frontrunners square off in a head-to-head, -head, Macron is supposedly meant to defeat her comfortably by a significant margin. The Republican Pact, as it's known, will see voters all over the political spectrum rally behind Macron simply because he's not Le Pen. And after Geert Wilders was defeated in the Netherlands in March, the idea that Le Pen's demise is almost guaranteed has gained traction in mainstream media. I'm here to tell you that Le Pen certainly isn't the favourite to win the presidential race, but her chances are becoming greater by the day. Anyone who thinks this is a done affair is being blissfully optimistic. There's a few things that could clearly work against Macron. Firstly, a domestic terrorism event would certainly benefit Le Pen, and with events in Sweden and potentially Norway in the last few hours, it's definitely something that can help gain the National Front traction. Secondly, as Macron has become the poster boy of the establishment, more anti-establishment voters and those dissatisfied with the status quo will likely be pushed into Le Pen's direction. But what I really want to talk to about today is a clear enthusiasm gap. An enthusiasm gap which could dampen voter turnout for Macron and help Le Pen get over the line. This same enthusiasm gap was vital for the victories of both the Brexiteers and Trump supporters. Despite all the hype about Macron and his centrist credentials, Macron has enemies on both his flanks. Having quit the Socialist Party to run as an independent, many on the left view him as a traitor and associate him with the unpopular economic policies of the current Socialist President Francois Hollande. Those same policies, coupled with his socialist path, is exactly why many centre-right voters who are currently backing Fillon are not convinced that Macron is a better bet than Le Pen in the second round. Furthermore, Macron's inability to cut ties with these unpopular policies such as liberalisation reform are acting like an albatross around his neck. 90% of French voters consider unemployment or the economy as the most important issue this election. Le Pen's economic policies are clear and digestible. Referendum on Eurozone membership, renegotiation of France's EU membership, greater protection of French industries, these things hit home in many parts of France. Understandable when you consider the fact that French youth unemployment is at 23.6%. This is why Le Pen, unlike Trump and Brexit, has a significant supporter base comprised of young voters. Macron is weighed down by these previous political endeavours, however, and therefore he's struggling to have his new economic platform break through the noise. This has helped to fuel a dangerously large enthusiasm gap between Macron's supporters and the backers of Le Pen. While 60% of Le Pen supporters are certain they'll back her, only 47% of Macron's can say the same. Furthermore, over the past month, the proportion of Fillon supporters saying that they'll back the National Front candidate has increased, now up to 30%. Another third of Fillon supporters have indicated that they'll either stay home or are still undecided. And this undecided element is key. In this election, the French are historically undecided. If the idea of a Republican pact is to work, the majority of the French nation need to fear Le Pen's victory so much so that they're willing to go to the polls and outvote her supporters. With such a high proportion of the country still undecided, with less than a month to the second round, that suggests large segments of the country don't actually fear a Le Pen victory. Macron will never be able to unite Le Pen's detractors by his policy platform alone. But if fear cannot unite her detractors, then this election could be much, much closer than people currently think. Le Pen supporters are motivated and energised, and it would appear that the same cannot be said for those who are seeking to keep her out of office. Thanks for listening to Black Swan Politics. Don't forget to subscribe.